Have you ever wondered whether the problems in the world today would exist if we had deeper connection to ourselves, others, and the environment, and acted from that place? Welcome to the Conscious Action Podcast with your hosts, Brian Burneman and Kayla Grimble, who believe that connection is the key to taking conscious action as individuals and creating a better world. We are here to raise awareness and inspire meaningful action by sharing stories, knowledge, and conversations with thought leaders and change makers. From sustainability to well-being and everything related to conscious living, our mission is to empower you to be the change that you want to see in the world. Welcome everyone to a new episode of the Conscious Action Podcast. I am Brian Berneman, your host. And for this episode, I wanted to bring in the theme of embodiment and being present. This has been a huge part of my journey of discovering myself, of reconnecting with my being and how I approach life. I've been really fortunate that when my parents were encouraging me to find some of these practices, I was saying yes. And that some of the very first ones were about coming back to my body were about coming back to the part of my body that I had neglected for a long time. And that was my body and my feelings. I was just living in my head. Everything that I was doing, I was in my head. I was always rethinking things, just wondering what ifs and going through all of these different scenarios in my head about the things that I should have done or that I could do, and that wasn't helping me. And looking back at that moment, I didn't think that that was happening to me. I didn't know that I was in touch with my body and with my feelings and with my emotions. I remember my parents a lot of times saying that I wasn't communicating what was happening, that I was pushing everything down. And in the moment, I didn't think that I was doing that. Looking back, I was definitely doing it. I wasn't really present because I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to trust the feelings in my body because I hadn't activated that part of my being. And there's nothing wrong with that. Most of us in the Western world, we've been taught and educated to use our heads to use it primarily. Anytime that we see something, we label it, we categorize it, we put it on the good or bad piles or neutral or whatever judgment we have of it. It comes, it all comes back to the way that we've been wired, the way that we've been conditioned and taught to be based on our own circumstances, families, um, cultures, countries, whatever it is there that software that we have. That's the lens that we're seeing things through. And this is why it's so important to be able to rely on the wisdom of our bodies. Because the body hasn't been in the same way as our minds corrupted, for lack of a better word, by all of those things. The body is much more light and much more present in a way. Now that doesn't mean that there's not blockages and things that are stuck in the body, energetically and physically, but the body has a wisdom that is not the same as the one in the mind. And that doesn't mean that the mind is wrong or anything. The mind is amazing. What amazing tool that we have that we're able to use and think and relate to others. But as we have been using that, we neglected this other big part of us, that is the body and the feelings. And in a sense, is how a lot of times we can connect with others from a different level, from a deeper level, where we can not only connect, but we can become intimate with anyone. Intimate in a sense, that we can actually be there and feel the other person. And for me, 
through the years of working with my body and reconnecting with it and the feelings and the somatic experience and healing and understanding the energy flows, how we relate to others, how I relate to others is really from a body perspective. Yes, I use my mind, but I go with the feelings in my body. And when I am able to allow myself to be present, to be aware of what is happening, to feel the feelings in my body, the sensations, to feel the energy flow and to listen to it and to attune myself to how my body speaks, then I'm able to navigate through life very differently. I stopped what I was doing when I was younger, that spiraling down on anything that was happening and all of the stories that I was telling myself and all of the what ifs and all of that. I don't waste my time anymore on that. That doesn't mean that I'm not learning from experience, but I am just not wasting my energy and I don't just focus on the past. Even though as I am working with the past and with healing the past, I am in the present. So being able to be present can start by returning to your body, by returning to your breath, by focusing on openness, being grounded in this moment, open to the experience without judging it, without trying to manipulate it, without pushing it away, embracing what is, seeing any experience that we're going through, how can we befriend it? How can I befriend my experience? How can I befriend my body? How can I befriend my mind? How can I befriend others? We don't have control over a lot of things in life. And on those things, befriending them as well. Because that's nothing that we can do. So coming back to the body is a gift that we can give ourselves. When we are present, that's a gift for us and for others. It's one of the best gifts that we can give someone else, being present for them. As we've talked previously on this podcast, listening is really important aspect of being present. But sometimes it's just about being present. And a lot of times people can tell when you're present or when you're not. Even if you're physically somewhere, you might not be present. You might be in your head wandering somewhere else. This is particularly true with children. If you're around kids and you're not present, they will call you out. They know when you are not present there. So as a practice, it's really incredible to practice with kids because they will tell you off. And when we allow ourselves to be present, to be able to connect to that inner wisdom, to connect with the flow of energy of what is happening and what we are allowing, then we can actually not only allow that, but we can start to create from that. When we understand how to connect with the body and how to move energy, we're able to be something and then allowing that quality or that energy to come into place. I see this a lot of times with manifestation work and those phrases of fake it till you make it be it, be in your body, that quality or that which you're wanting to create. If you are that, in a sense, you don't even need it to become in the physical, but it will come. If that is what you're embodying, then that will come. One thing is when it's going to materialize, but it's already manifested. So what are you wanting to embody? Are you wanting to embody 
lightness? Are you wanting to, to embody love? Are you wanting to embody what, whatever quality you want to? Abundance. How can you embody that? Feel it as if that is already it. It's not about thinking my way up to I am love, I am abundance. That might be helpful. But being able to truly feel that feeling and allowing that to be part of my being, that is how we embody, that is how we bring things into life. So what are you embodying any given moment of any given day? And yes, things can get in the way. We lose awareness. Whenever we catch it, we come back. What am I embodying? What am I embodying? Asking myself that. And a lot of times we get others as a mirror response. The people that we're hanging out with, the situations that we're in, all of that sometimes is a mirror of what we're embodying. It might be something that we have been embodying and we're still in the transformation aspect of it. But any single moment, ask yourself, what am I embodying? Feel it in your body. Allow yourself to be immersed with that energy, with those qualities. Bring that into your everyday life. Bring that into your work life. There's these amazing teachings that come from Tibetan Buddhism that I learned and I practice that, I, that it's called skillful means. And in a way, it's how to use work as the arena for our development. So when we are going to work, how are we being? How are you participating? What do you think work is? How do you see work? Are you having to go to work every day just to pay rent and things like that? Or do you get to work? Do you get to be able to make a living out of sharing your gifts? Some of them or all of them, depending on your life circumstances. Shifting how you are being at work because guess what you have to be there if you're there so allow yourself to be present where you are and for me work is how we show up in the world work is a way that we are showing what we embody so what are you sharing with others how are you sharing that the more that we allow ourselves to change perspective, to open ourselves up, to come back home to our bodies. We are giving ourselves a wonderful gift. And it's a gift for everyone. Because when you allow yourself to come back to who you truly are, then you are bringing the gift of you into the world. And we need you to be you. We don't need you to be anybody else. We need you to be you. So come back to your body. Develop more presence. Anytime that you are not that, and you catch yourself, just come back. Anytime you have the chance to start anew. Anytime you have the chance to catch yourself and to become aware and to be in your body and to embody creatively what you want to be. So I would love to know how are you living your life in your body? What are you embodying every single day? And how can you bring more of yourself into life? How can you 
gift all of us who you truly are deep down. Thank you everyone for listening to this episode. I hope that something sparked in you, something resonated with you, and I hope that you can embody something that comes from within, some nice, open, loving, abundance, kind energy. And until next time, have a wonderful week. What did you like the most about this episode? Take a moment to think about what change you can make in your life today. Share your conscious action on social media using hashtag conscious action and tagging at conscious action and said so we can celebrate your impact on the world and create a ripple effect. One easy action we would love for you to take right now is to share, like and subscribe to this podcast. This will help us get these messages out into the world and inspire more people to take conscious action in their own lives, contributing to the better world we hope for.